Welcome back to another episode of Maddie's Rap. I'm your host, Matt D. Talford, and I'm with my main man, Brian Moore, here. Uh, and listen, um, I'm going to skip all the introductory and formalities. <laughs> hey, buddy, uh, y'all know who I am. You guys know who he is. <laughs> um, this is going to be a post rap from last night's college football championship. Y'all know watching, you've seen some of my videos, you see my other YouTube channel. Um, I'm a Clemson fan. All right. I'm a Clemson fan too, but I had a mixed uh, feelings because one of my good friends, matter of fact, he was the best man at my wedding, mm -hmm. a guy by the name of Jeff Scott. Mm -hmm. But Jeff actually works at LSU. Mm -hmm. So as, last night when the game was going on, I was texting between you and, and Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jeff and you, as I was texting, I'm the neutral party here. So I'm, you know, I'm pulling for my buddy in LSU, even though I'm a closet Clemson fan. Actually, I'm an NC State fan. That's where my son went to school. But ACC, LSU, you're an ACC fan. We and actually, and, and to be honest with you, uh, Jeff and I uh, had two loyalties for national championship because our school, James Madison University, played on Saturday for the national championship in, in the FCS. Which that's where I went to school at to play uh, college football. But last night, uh, me and Jeff and Matt were uh, texting back and forth during the game. And I'm telling you folks, I'd like to show you the text messages I got from both of these guys last night. Of course, Matt was feeling pretty good. He had a 10-point lead and it kind of evaporated. And uh, Brian, wow. let, look, all right. I'm just going <laughs> to jump right in here, man. Jump right on just, in. All right. You know the deal. <laughs> I don't want to talk bad about the officiating. But I'm going to talk bad about the officiating, okay? All right, so where did they get these refs from? These these were Pac-10 officials. I mean, I I'd have felt better about the bad calls if you had told me these were SEC officials. But these were Pac-10 officials. They're supposed to be neutral. This game, and listen, let me let me just say this up front, okay? Mm -hmm. Clemson got outplayed, and more importantly, I feel like Dabo got outcoached. All right. Um, I said something on Facebook yesterday, last night, where I said, you can count on one hand the number of times you've seen Dabo Swinney get outcoached by the the opposing coach in the last five years. I mean, Clemson has been in the college football playoff five years straight, mm -hmm. and four of those five years have been in the national title game. Mm -hmm. and, and won 29 in a row going into last night. 29 in a row going into last night. Dabo and, and and his defensive coordinator Brett Venables, they usually have it together. If, if you if you if you catch them with a stun punch in the first half, they usually come out and make some great second half adjustments. I didn't see that last night. Um, I saw what <laughs> and it's funny, Brian. Tell, tell tell these people out here what you said to me earlier in that game, uh, where you referenced an NFL game that had happened a day or so before. Well, I told you if if everybody watched the Houston Texan Kansas City game, of course, if you watched the game on uh, Sunday, uh, Ken, uh, Houston the Texans got to a twenty-four to nothing lead, and I said to Matt, I texted him and said uh, uh, that uh, LSU is a quick strike team, so I wouldn't get too happy, uh, specifically because there's so many similarities between the quarterback for Kansas City, which is Patrick Mahomes. And Joe Burrows, who of course is the Heisman Trophy winner at LSU, and it seemed like LSU caught fire at the right time. Now back to the, some of the things you were talking about, uh, some of the refereeing calls in the game. There were two really crucial no calls that I think played a role in the game. It could have been a probably tighter at the end. Who knows what might have happened right. if the game was closer down the stretch than. A couple of calls, and the one call in specific was the uh, call where the player for LSU, the running back, right caught back. the ball out of the backfield, and somehow it looked like he stepped out of bounds. But technically, he stuck his hand on the out of bounds line, which after they missed the call, he ended up going another 15 or 20 yards down into the red zone of uh, of uh, Clemson, and basically scored after that. Uh, and another uh, call in me and my friend from LSU was talking about this video can be kind of funny I think that the kid caught the ball from, from Clemson Higgins he's talking about the catch the catch yeah, yeah. yeah. they said it, it looked like for the video angle but there's another video angle might have showed his foot actually grazing the ground his foot from what I saw his foot grazed yeah. the ground yeah. it didn't hit and dig it grazed the ground 
But what they did to cover themselves is they claimed it was, oh, he didn't control the ball control going the ball, out of bounds. Right. That, that was another call. The the the, the, the out of bounds play with uh, I forget his name Williams uh, the running back I can't his name his name escapes me right now I don't follow LSU so I don't right don't, don't fault me for not knowing who their players are I don't mm-hmm. follow them. Their running back touched his hand down out of bounds and his foot hit out of bounds. So my problem is when they showed the replay when they showed the angle the camera angle where the running back is is the play is going this way. What I saw was the line judge trailing the play, and he was never looking down at the line. Now, the, the, what's key there is when you're watching NFL officials, that line judge, he doesn't care about what's going on. Somebody else is calling, looking for shoving, late right. hits, all of that. His only thing is watching that line to see if that player's foot is touching that line when he's trailing that play. That's all he's doing. He's running behind the play, but his eyes are focused on that line. That guy was not an official. He was a fan last night. <laughs> he was watching the game like a fan. So listen. I don't want to sit here and complain and say that the, the the officiating cost us, but the thing is, when you are are giving up first downs on crucial third downs, um, when 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 the the officials are missing mm-hmm. their job, it, it keeps the momentum going for LSU. Now, the, the, Brian, I'm going to say this. My point is, Clemson got in the backfield with Burroughs I can't a countless number of times last night and had hands on him and could not tackle him. Put the hands Clemson on. has never all season long had a problem getting a quarterback down when they get to him. Clemson could not tackle last night. That made all the difference in the world. How many times did they have to run it back in the backfield? It, 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 it's almost like there was an invisible layer of, of, of grease on these run, LSU uniforms Clemson could not tackle last night. Yes, I mean, there were many times where there were missed tackles. Uh, they had Joe Burrow sacked at least, he it felt void at least five sacks last night. Right. And I saw that could have been major losses. He escaped out and got positive yards. And even in one case, down right before halftime, that was a big run right before halftime. That was a huge run. He, he ran out of bounds by, by 25 yards. And, and that was that was probably one of the biggest plays for them to score right before halftime because that put the score up basically uh, that put them up to where um, I think that was that the score that uh, or halftime no, it was twenty eight to seventeen yeah, yeah that yeah, put them up yeah. by eleven points up 11. because of that because it was twenty four I mean it was uh it was at the time it was uh twenty four to seventeen I mean excuse me it was twenty one to seventeen twenty one seventeen now if you go into halftime twenty one to seventeen that made a big difference. Now, yeah. here's something, and we said this last night, and we're going to jump in later into the game. Mm-hmm. Again, I, LSU had a better team last night mm-hmm. than Clemson. Mm-hmm. They executed better. They got better play. Joe Burrows outplayed uh, Trevor. He just did. He outplayed him. He, he, he did, but Brian, there's this, there's this this funny little word that applies to music and sports, and it's okay. called rhythm. Okay. Mm-hmm. The LSU Tigers played rhythmic offense last night. Yes, they, did. They, they They maintained their rhythm. Clemson never got into a rhythm. Uh, Clemson they, Clemson never got into a rhythm on offense. And defensively, they never disrupted LSU's rhythm. No. Now, if you make those tackles when you get in the backfield and you got you got Burroughs dead to rights, mm-hmm. now you can disrupt their rhythm because now he's getting a little hurried. Trevor was hurried last night. Very much. When you got a guy who's been accurate for two straight seasons and now he's throwing high repeatedly all of a sudden, that typically tells you that he's he's rattled. He's rattled. He's rattled. He's trying to get the ball out of his hands quickly, and he's not sitting down on those throws. Why was he rattled? Because LSU's pressure. But now you've got to make an adjustment as an offensive coordinator and say, hey, let me get some quick hitch plays to get this ball out of my kid's hand and let us establish rhythm. There were times last night when LSU looked like the Super Bowl era uh, uh, Patriots. They just, Brady, you never could get them because they had a rhythm going. They spread the field, and that is what they did well last night. They spread the field, and they, they made Clemson choose. Either we're going to go coverage, or we're going to leave somebody open and take our chances with blitzing, and Clemson never could get into that rhythm. But here's, here's what I saw. Why didn't Travis Etienne carry the ball more last night? You know, I had that same he conversation. He ran the ball very well last night. You burn burning clock by running the ball. Right. And I think that they didn't take full advantage of Travis Etienne playing last night. I think it was trying. They were trying to get it be a quarterback's duel between uh, between uh, Burroughs and Trevor. And I just like I said, uh, 
Joe Burrow got the upper hand. Now, one thing, and I say this to you, mm-hmm. the the play that got that player from Clemson disqualified from the game. Oh yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Everybody hit. agrees that the that the football world, pro and college, have decided that when you hit somebody with your helmet, that's that's a penalty of some kind. In college, mm-hmm. you get that head on helmet on helmet or helmet on anything. They they basically disqualify you, fire you from the game. And I said to you, football ain't football. Now, I played football from the age of 12 to the age of 21. And what I saw last night with that hit is just breaks my heart as a as an ex-football player that that basic tackle that, that, that number 47 put on Gene Joe Skalski, Burrow, Skalski. that that tackle would have gotten you one of those uh, stickers on your helmet. Right. Yeah, it's a different game. And now, now that same hit in college football gets you disqualified well, and, 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 from and, the game. And the sad part that was, is crazy. It wasn't helmet. The helmet. He, his helmet hit his shoulder pad. That's the true. helmet hit the shoulder pad. They call that targeting. Now, to me, there was an egregious call that should have been called targeting, but they said, "Well, the rules committee says blah blah blah." The th- that was a defenseless when when Clemson's uh, I forget which player that that might was that Higgins that went up for that uh number that three. catch number number three okay the, okay the, the receiver. okay. That goes up for the catch. Mm-hmm. The ball is uncatchable, and, he, and the guy in lays the into him. He mm-hmm. drills him, and he could have broken his neck. Whip, whiplash, any number of severe injuries could have resulted from. There was no reason for him to hit him. Right. He had not launched when the ball was in the air. Mm-hmm. There was no reason for him to hit him. That ball was clearly overthrown, and he still decided he wanted to make a hit. Why was there a call there? So my problem is with the officiating. It was a little bit lopsided, and. The, 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 the biggest, the most egregious of all of them was the pass, the defensive pass and the, or the offensive pass and appearing interference call on the touchdown. When they both were when, when I'm fight. grabbing your the front of your uh, uh, shoulder pads underneath your uh-huh. and I'm the defender and I'm grabbing you and you push me I off. push you off and catch and, the ball. But the way the guy the defensive back fell. So it looked like the receiver got the advantage. And he did a LeBron that, James. He flopped. Well, he did. And Sorry, got, LeBron. I like you. <laughs> but I have to he say did that. flop. That that made that. Because <laughs> I, I was thinking to myself, it looked like, I mean, the, the defense back just dropped right there. I said, you know what? They should have picked that flag up, Ryan. Because to me, if both of them are shoving, they, they, that should have gone to replay, okay? They should have reviewed it. They and when re- they reviewed it, they, they should have said, hey, you know what? Both players were shoving and pushing. There's no reason to. But they don't replay that in college football. In pros, they would have replayed it, but not in college. So that was the backbreaker because if you score there, Clemson has – we've seen Clemson all year. Yeah. We've seen Clemson all year for the last five years. Clemson can go on a run in under five minutes and put up two, three scores quickly. Mm. But that was the that was the air out of their sails. I mean, that was pretty much it. Well, the two things I think that would sell Clemson – what sealed their fate last night was, number one, at, after the second quarter – the Clemson defense, which was the best in the country, I mean, points and yards, they were kind of, they just, like I said, they had problems tackling, and basically the receivers for LSU might have been a little bit better than the ones from Clemson. Um, yeah, but you know what? A lot of that, I, I say this all the time, the speed of the quarterback is the speed of the receiver. When that quarterback is throwing that ball to you under nervous energy, you tend to receive that energy. And you and it, it's it's a little bit more difficult to come down with that ball. Uh, when that quarterback is throwing that ball poised, you're like, it, 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 it's a synergy between the quarterback and the wide receiver. That's true. Trevor Lawrence was hurried last night a lot, and he could not get the ball out of his hands. Now, it doesn't help that Clemson couldn't get separation from the, the corners either, but. Clemson's defenders were one on one with LSU's receivers. So LSU's receivers weren't beating them uh, 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 by three, four yards. No, but they were making. Burroughs them. was just throwing that ball, putting it where his receiver could get it, and the receiver. They looked like they were in practice. Them kids. Well, let's put it like this. I I equate this was last year. This is said uh, karma can be cruel. Yeah. Last year, yeah. when you played Alabama, yeah. Yeah. the same thing that happened to Alabama happened to Clemson yeah. this year. Yeah. The guy, kids was making catches for for LSU. Like last year, remember Ross and Higgins was mm-hmm. Was, mm-hmm. was making big catches against Alabama last yeah. year. And you basically beat them by about the same score. It's about the same about the same margin of victory. Well, no. Actually, I think we beat them 44-16. It, we, we, I mean, that was a drubbing. Well, that, that was a drubbing. This, this game was a little bit closer, but... Fundamentally speaking, the difference last season 
or last year's uh, CFP title game, Travis Etienne ran the ball. Etienne did not. Clemson should have said, hey, look, here's the other thing. First half, you're running Etienne and you're doing a lot of play action. So you get open passes on play action. They completely went away from the run and they completely went away from the play action for what reason I, escapes me. Well, because that offensive coach and Dabo Sweeney decided that they were going to bet that Trevor was going to have a better passing game than Joe Burrow. Trevor is still young and, and, right. he, and he's not. And he, and he will be a first round draft pick next year in the NFL draft. I, I mean, he's going to He's got be, one more season to play. Right, he's got one more season to play. And here's the good thing. And we can kind of wrap, it, wrap this up. I know it hurts as a Clemson fan they lost, but they've already put it out already that, that, that Clemson is a two to one favor to win it next year. So guess what? Yeah. You're gonna be back into the game again. The, the ACC ain't gonna be no better than it was last year, so you should be right back in it again well, next year. We're seeing some rumblings with the I mean, I think we've seen a few rumblings with the bowl committee, not the bowl committee, but the CFP selection committee this year. And I, I think they're tired of Clemson. I, I, I just, I mean, I mean kind of a, but they're not going to keep uh, you know, Trevor out in the playoffs. This is going to be, he's no. going to be, a, him and that kid from Ohio State, they're yeah. going to be the front runners for the yeah. Heisman Trophy. Trevor needed this loss. Yeah, he he did. needed this loss because, yeah, make you know, a better player. well, when, you, when you're hearing, oh, he hasn't lost since high school and blah, blah, blah. When you're hearing that all the time, you can't get the big head and start reading your own press and smelling, your, smelling yourself, as they say. Mm -hmm. I think, if anything, that we're going to see the champion in Trevor Lawrence Absolutely. show up now. And I feel sorry for whoever's got to play Clemson next year. Oh, yeah. Clemson I think Clemson's going to run out. the table next year. And, uh, but, but you know, and three it's out not going to. five ain't going to be a bad three out of five championships. That's, that's, that's a dynasty. That's a dynasty. And the other thing is, it's not going to hurt the recruiting. Um, no. I, you know, the, 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 here's the question. Etienne's a junior, right? Yeah. Is I, he, he, is he in, going? He's he going, going to. Okay, he's in a But you got, you got guys coming. Yeah, we got guys. We got guys coming by. Here's the thing, too. This is what I love about about Clemson, mm -hmm. and I love this about your team. Mm -hmm. They got a great coach. They do. I love Dabo Sweeney. He is he is the perfect coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man is he believes in his players, yeah. and he you know he put his arms around uh, Trevor yeah. last night and let him know, hey. Kid, we had a nice run, but the night was not night. It wasn't night. It wasn't night. And but we're gonna be back next year. We're gonna take that chip next year. I think that's what he did when he went to, to Trevor and just said, "Hey, we're gonna be good for next year." Yeah, Clemson's gonna be fine. Um, Brian, I, I tweeted this last night, and I'm gonna say it here uh, again. LSU is a good football team. Yep. They were great last night. Mm -hmm. They did not need any help from the officials. I feel like the viewing public was perhaps robbed of what could have been a greater game had the officiating been tighter. Uh, I'm not saying that Clemson would have won that game. I mean, yeah. Clemson looked, I mean, they, uh, LSU to me looked like Alabama of three seasons ago, uh, three or four seasons ago, that, that first Alabama of, team. They broke a lot of records this yeah, year, though. Yeah, they're big, they're strong, and, and they're fast. fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the, uh, if you know those three, that's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so this, this was LSU's year. Um, but that, that being said, I think that uh, I think Clemson's going to be fine next year. And the one thing I, I want to just leave on this note. Okay. NFL, not NFL, NFL too. NFL, NBA, NCAA, listen. You officials, and I'm not, I'm not professionally paid by any sports organization, so I've got artistic liberty to say what I'm saying here. <laughs> Unless you're being paid by somebody that's saying, hey, make this game look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Try to do your job to the utmost Ability, okay. Maybe you guys need to watch film, and and maybe it should be a requirement that officials watch film and study film to see what calls they missed. Because I feel like the viewing public was robbed of what could have been a great football game. It started out great, it ended great for LSU, and not so great for anybody from Clemson that came. I don't listen. I don't mind losing when a I leave it all on the court or the field, and b you don't take it away from me. If if I've been beaten straight up, then I just tip my hat. I feel like there's some calls, and I'm, 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 I tried not to complain about the calls, but it was obvious. But you're being a fan too. Of your I, team. I'm a, being a little bit of a fan. I'm being He's a little being bit of a an fan analyst of this team, y'all. I'm being an analyst. Uh, Stephen A. Smith said something last <laughs> night that I, I, I responded to. He said, uh, "You know, okay, that was not defensive pass interference, but it probably wouldn't have mattered anyway." And I'm like, "How can you say that wouldn't have mattered?" No, I believe if they had a maybe if you had a scored that touchdown because it was quick, mm -hmm. you would have been down by ten points. Yeah, you still had a, a still had at least two more possessions right. left, and who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, you know. Now again, 
Clemson's defense, for whatever reason, last night they didn't tackle. They did. They missed some tackles. Uh, they just missed some assignments. Uh, number eight, the defensive back. Oh yeah. He, he had a really tough time against number one, and I think that kid's gonna be in the NFL. Yeah. In the first round pick. Yeah. Matter of fact, I we I I said on the offensive side, on both sides of the offense, you had at least. Eight first round draft oh, picks yeah, easy. between Clemson easy. and LSU. Easy. Uh, eight first round picks because mm-hmm. uh, I mean they that was talent. That, last night was a culmination of of the most talented eighteen to twenty two year olds in the country in football. Yeah, right? that was the creme de la creme of talented football players. Was that game between Clemson and LSU last night? There was going to be a lot of kids out there that played last night. Was going to make millions of dollars in the National Football League. I'm telling you, I well, see that I mean, already. We did, the unsung heroes were the LSU's offensive line. That, 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 they were the unsung heroes of that game because they, the, the pass protection, the run blocking, it was, they it did, was stellar they last did night. An awesome job. But the last question I want to ask you is sure. uh, a little bit, a little bit tougher one, perhaps. Okay. Um, is Joe Burrow the real deal at the next level, or is he going to be like another Ryan Lee? No, Ryan Lee. I told you I equate him. He's got to be in the right system now. From my understanding, Cincinnati has the first pick in the draft. So let's just say he goes to the Cincinnati Bengals next year. Well, Cincinnati still has A.J. Green. He's on that team. Yeah, I don't, yeah He true. didn't play, but that's he's true. a good player. And I think that Cincinnati will be – I think they had a big falling off. And I think – his first year, I think, it depends on if he starts or not. Uh, obviously, they're going to get rid of the quarterback. Uh, what's the quarterback for Cincinnati? I'm uh, uh, Andy, Dalton. Andy, Dalton. Andy Dalton. Yeah. So, Andy Dalton will probably be traded or they'll cut him or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, it's Joe Burrow's position to take over yeah. from day one. Now, most NFL quarterbacks, and now more than ever, they'll start you that first year because they're paying you so much money. Yeah, money yeah. I just think if, if they – Cincinnati grooms him right, I think he'll be a good pick. Now, there's other teams who I've heard that want to trade up to that first pick to get it. One being our Carolina Panthers. I mean, it's a room out there that they would love to trade up to get him, which would eliminate Cam Newton, of course. But, you know, I think the kid gets in the right situation. I think he's going to be a, a good quarterback in the NFL. Will he be a historically good? I don't know. You know, it remains to be seen. I mean, you, you, seen. you contrast Daniel Jones, who, uh, who who came from Duke and, and actually looked really good in the NFL. Uh, but we've also seen guys uh, leave, look really good in the NFL uh, mm-hmm. and, or in college and then play poorly in the NFL. So we, we don't know. We, right. it, it remains to be Just seen. Just to have, be a first-round pick, I mean, uh, let's see how really good Baker Mayfield really is. I, I, now, I think he took a step back this year. And uh, and then you look at uh, Mahomes and, and – Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson. And then, but you look at a guy like Mitchell Tabisky, who was picked higher than those two guys mm-hmm. in, 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 in struggles. his day, maybe number for yeah. the Chicago Bears. Struggles, Bay. struggles. So, mm-hmm. hey, listen, guys, uh, thank you for watching today. Uh, again, it's your host, Matt D. Talbot, with my amazing co host, the amazing football, sports analytical knowledge. Good to be here today. Brian Moore from the Be More Faithful Radio Show. Uh, you've been watching Matty's Rap, and it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Peace. <laughs>